We have a special guest tonight. She's right here. The famous Kina Talia Hobbs. She's nine years old. We, we, she's going to help us out with something at the beginning of this call. Um, let me pull up this chat so I can see it. I'm going to mute everybody so that we can, um, so we don't get a bunch of feedback on there. So give me one second. Okay. Welcome to the Thursday night team call. Like it has been crazy busy from summit in Nashville to super Saturday last week to, uh, for those of that are my personally sponsored coaches on here, we're doing a team retreat next week in St. George. I see Lori on there. She's going, Juliana's going. Uh, that's all I can see right off the bat. But we're doing a team retreat, and there's about 40 uh, people coming, so we're super excited about that. But we've been moving on the, on the go all the time, and it's, uh, it's fun. Uh, it's been exciting for me. Uh, this introvert's a little bit tired, so I'm ready for summer to be over, but it's going to be an absolutely amazing uh, retreat that we're going to do. Um, you know, we, we came away from the, the Coach Summit, which is awesome. We came away from Super Saturday, which was awesome. And then we had a dynasty surge yesterday with Lindsay, which was awesome. And so we're, we're like pummeled, right? It feels like we're pummeled with all this amazing training and inspiration. So what do we do next? And it's easy to feel very overwhelmed at any time. But one of the things I've learned through, uh, through T Tony Robbins, uh, doing some Tony Robbins training, is that we get to give uh, meaning to every feeling that we have. And it's kind of a cool thing. Like, we're not, that's not going to be the topic of this call, but just to give you an idea, like, uh, what I used to, when I used to feel overwhelmed, like it was the feeling of like this like panic, like there's so much to do. And so all I've done is just recreated the meaning for when I feel like that. I've created a feeling of excitement that I have a lot of opportunity to reach people and help people. So think about in your life when you're, when you feel overwhelmed or you feel anything, you get to create meaning for everything that's going in your life. And, and I feel blessed that personal development has helped me understand that. Uh, and then it's always important to go back to the basics. So when I was feeling that feeling this morning, I woke up and I was like, oh man, I got like 15 texts and like four of them are brand new coaches that want to schedule a getting started right call today. And I got to get the team slides ready and I got to get, you know, I got to do this and that. And, and I, just, I got home at one o'clock in the morning. So I was feeling that this morning and, it, and I just immediately changed it to a feeling of excitement. I'm excited because I have a team call today. I'm excited because I get to learn the goals of four new coaches. So remember that you get to create that in your own life. Uh, and then what did I do this morning when I woke up? I felt that feeling and then I just did the four vital behaviors. I did my workout. I did my personal development. I taught my personal development on social media. I reached out and started conversations with five new people. And then I recognized somebody for their success. So I wrote a post about Jennifer Greenberg. And we're going to talk a little bit about her today as well. But once I did that, I was like, it was like this weight, like, ah, I did what I was supposed to do today. And then I just went on the list of, uh, I just kind of created a list of importance of the things I needed to do, uh, the getting started right calls, um, my follow-ups, and I just went one at a time. And guys, getting the team call ready, I knew the topic, but I just did it with Kina 15 minutes ago. We put the slides together. So it's just doing one thing at a time, and, and you guys, that's how your whole business is gonna be. So coming out of Summit, you got all this information, Make to-do lists to learn little things and apply things that you, that you learn that you want to apply, but stay focused on the fundamentals. The one thing I want you to remember is that the processes will change. Like at Summit next year, they may be teaching us something different that's working better, right? So the processes may change, but the principles will remain the same. And the principles are those four vital behaviors. So to get started, we're going to talk about, I'm going to share my screen. I don't know if I have it ready, so you guys may get a surprise. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it on my thing here. Give me one second. We're going to share my screen and we'll find where it's at. I'm trying to find the right desktop here. Oh, here it is. Okay. Give me a thumbs up when you see, if you can see my screen. Can you guys see it? And I'm just going to share it like this because if I make it big, then I can't see you guys on the side with the picture. So uh, the topic today is, is goals. And one thing I've realized is I have not talked enough recently about how specific the goals were I, I set and some of my coaches from the beginning that are hitting big accomplishments in their goal in, in their business now five years later. And so I want you to think about this thought. A goal without a plan is just a wish. So a goal without a plan is just a wish. And I said we have a special guest on here today. And uh, here she is right here. This is Kina. She's nine years old. And she uh, is um, 
I'm going to interview. We'll do like a little interview. So can you guys see Kina here on the screen? Can, can you guys see a little screen as well, or do you just see my screen? I want to make sure I can see you guys. I'm going to stop the share just so you can see us real quick and put it on speaker view so you can see her. Okay. Can you guys, can you guys see us? Let me mute one person because it's showing their screen. Give me one second. You got, cause you gotta, you gotta see this girl. Okay. I'll, I'll leave it like this in the gallery view because for some reason it's not showing. So this is Kina. Kina, that photo of you, what is it that you're doing? Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Awesome. So how long have you been doing Taekwondo? Like five months. Like five months. Awesome. Is, is it hard sometimes? Yeah. Is it fun sometimes? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what made you want, I say awesome a lot. So you're awesome. I got that from Barton if Barton's on here. So what made you want to do Taekwondo? Mm -hmm. I wanted to do it to get strong and confident. Strong and confident. Can you guys hear her? Okay, do a little bit louder. So she wants to be strong and confident. And so that's what you want to work on uh, when you're in your class. And guys, I only know this little girl like three, four years ago could hardly look at her mom and dad in the eyes when she talked to them. So she's getting really confident, to, especially to be on this call with you guys today. But so she wants to be strong and confident, and I'm already seeing that in five months. But what's your big goal with Taekwondo? What do you want to accomplish? Um, I want to get my black belt in three years. She wants to get her black belt in three years. Okay, so I want you guys to take a little note of that. She has a, a big goal she wants to accomplish, and what did she put on it? A deadline. So she put a deadline of three years. So, how, you know, life's going to get busy. You're going to be like fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. Hopefully boys don't come in the picture, but you're going to have all these things. How are you going to not stay distracted? Is there a way that you're going to stay focused on your goal? How do you stay focused? Um, my black belt on the wall. Your black belt on the wall. So, th so there's a big black belt on the wall that everybody can see. What? How, explain that. How is that? It has my name on it. Has your name on it. So she has a black belt with her name on it on her on the wall at her Taekwondo class. So, uh, is there ever times when you're at Taekwondo when they have you doing those push-ups or burpees or obstacle courses or learning new? techniques that is hard there's times that it's hard and what makes you not want to give up my black belt your black belt and how's it going to feel when you get that black belt i'm going to be proud you're going to be proud i'm going to be proud of you too are you guys going to be proud of her when she gets that you guys are going to be here to witness and see that right but you getting thumbs up they're going to be proud of you for doing that so thank you kina so that was that was her part so guys Oh, she wants to show you guys something before we move on. So, have you m taken, oh, I have another thing I wanted to share before. So, what's the first belt, do you know? White. White belt, and what did you just barely get recently? Show them. She got her orange belt. Guys, it's so crazy. When I'm at her class, I see this. This is like, right, this is like new coach. Now she's an emerald coach. Next is, what's next, yellow? That's like a ruby coach. Um, and do you know all the colors of the belt? Let, what are they? Let's just hear them. White, orange, yellow, camo, green, blue, purple, brown, red, red, black, and black. And black. Look at that. Did you know those colors before you started? Did you know any of that? How did you learn that? Um, at class. At class. You showed up to class. Awesome. Okay, thank you, Kina. So we can learn a lot from, from kids, guys. Um, one thing, I've been, I've been at her classes when she's, when she's there testing, and I remember one thing her, her teacher said, and I was like, man, it's, it's so true, and it's so awesome to see him teaching the kids this. It says, a journey of a thousand miles starts with, you know? A single step. A single step. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So I want you guys to remember that as well. Sometimes we forget that as adults, uh, that... Is it going to be easy to do that? What do you expect it's going to be like to earn that black belt? Kind of hard. Kind of hard. So, guys, anything worth having that you're going to be proud of is going to be kind of hard, and sometimes really hard. So I want you guys to remember that. Um, we're going to uh, go to the share screen again real quickly. 
So I want you guys to write that down. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So when it gets a little hard for Kina at her class, she's going to remember uh, this is what we were talking about before. This is going to take one step at a time, one day at one class at a time. She goes to class three times a week. So remember that, guys. Your big goal, whether it's uh, be, be a stay-at-home dad or to bring your wife home from work, remember it's going to take uh, just doing a single step every single day. And I can tell you when those kids get to class, if they're whining, <laughs> he, just, he tells them, to, to stand up straight and be proud of what they're doing and it doesn't deal with that. So remember that, that's what we expect from you guys as you go forward. So uh, I want you guys to think about that. Start writing down goals as, as you're thinking right now and you hear some things say, I want you guys to write down goals so you can start to get clear on your goals. Now I'm gonna give you guys some specific examples um, that I was talking about that I, I feel I don't, sh I didn't share, I haven't shared enough. I, it's funny, I get my team call ideas oftentimes when I'm sharing something one-on-one -on -one with someone a lot and then I'm like oh everybody needs to hear this so uh, a lot of times you look at someone that's successful maybe myself or we're gonna take Jennifer Greenberg for example right here with the red hair she was my recognition post for today today she advanced her second business center to the rank of one star diamond okay that's her second business center her first business center she is a nine star diamond she's been an elite coach for three years in a row an elite coach for three years in a row. She retired her husband, Mike, right here, from the police force, and now he's a volunteer sheriff. And they've been stay at home, they travel in, in a motor home. Often they have like four rentals that they put on VROB that all came from their beach body income. And they're living this life that uh, a lot of people dream of, right? And that's what you see, that's, what we, that's the picture we see today, which is five years later. But I wanna talk about her journey, and I want you guys to think about this. So Jennifer was my third coach. Jennifer and I were writing blog posts about P90X be far before we ever became coaches. We were passionate about P90X, we were passionate about telling people about it, and we were passionate about helping people get results with the program. So I became a coach, I took this leap of faith after eight months of, of fears, doubts, insecurities, I became a coach and said, Jennifer, you need to do this with me, we're gonna do this, and we started, uh, we started together. Now guys, I hit Success Club 10 every month since that first month until now. 67 months in a row of Success Club 10. Now Jennifer on the other side, guys, did not do that. So this is where I want you guys to pay really close attention. She only hit Success Club maybe three times in her first year. Success Club 5. Maybe three times in her first year. It took her four months to become an Emerald Coach. It took her four months to sign up her first two coaches. Guys, I did that in, in like three days. She did that in four months. It took her 14 months to become a diamond coach. Okay? And I, I, I'm doing these slow so you can let this sink in. And then she didn't hit Success Club consistently, like Success Club 5 consistently, until her like 18th month, until a year and a half into the business. But I'm gonna to talk to you about that and talk to you about goals and why they're so important. Uh, Jennifer had one of the things that I think is vital to being successful at Team Beachbody, a love for the fitness programs and what Team Beachbody does for your health and fitness, first and foremost. When she joined as a coach, I asked her what her goals were. You know, she was my third coach. I didn't know what I was doing really, other than uh, I was gonna, I thought everybody should be a part of Team Beachbody. And I said, Jennifer, why are you a coach in our, in our little getting started right? And she told me, you know, like, I feel great with these programs. Everybody should be healthier and these programs work. But really, like, as far as building a business, you know, because I told her, I'm bringing my wife home from work. That's my big goal. So I was, like, expecting her to have some big goal like that. And she's like, no, I just really want to, I really want to just be able to uh, go get shoes or get my nails done without, um, without my husband, Mike, getting upset at me or giving me a hard time. Right, and I know some of you guys are looking at your spouse out of the screen on here. And we've all been there before, where it's like you want to do little things, but uh, you know it's kind of a nuisance because uh, it doesn't fit in the bills. And so that was her. She she just wanted some play money so she could get that stuff um, without without um, Mike giving her a hard time about getting her nails done or getting shoes done. So getting her shoes. So that was her initial goal, guys. And so that's that's what she was working. That's why she was helping people. 
And what did she do? She got enough money and she went and got her nails done. She went and got the nails done. Uh, she got a new pair of shoes. And so we just slowly kept working, right? And then I remember asking her, like she got her nails and you know, got her nails done, got some shoes. I was like, okay, what else do you want to do? Well, like what else is like, what else is something that you, you would like? And, and they lived like this because they went, uh, you know, they went through bankruptcy and lost everything uh, in Florida and then moved up to Tennessee. And, and, you know, Mike was working 60, 80 hours a week as a, as a police officer. And she was working uh, a full-time job as well in an office. And so all that money went to paying the bills. And so I asked her like, okay, what else would you like to accomplish that? What's, what's another thing that you would like, like that you just can't have? Like this just doesn't fit the budget. And, and it was funny. We were just having a phone conversation. She's like, you know what makes me really mad is like, I asked my boss, like I have a chair at work. My office chair has a big rip in it and it's like, it's old. It has a big rip and it's not comfortable. And that's what I sit in every day and they won't give me a new chair. <laughs> and I said, well, we, we had this conversation. I was like, well, how cool would it be if you just bought your own chair and took it to work? Like you bought yourself a comfy chair because you're there eight hours a day anyway. You might as well be comfortable. And so she set a goal. And with her beach body money, she set a goal and she went and got a chair for her, uh, for her office at work. And so she hit that and then we started talking again. What else would you like? And I remember her saying that she wanted to go visit some family in Florida. And so she booked a plane ticket, got the price, booked the plane ticket, set the deadline right because she bought the ticket. And then she started working or kept working. And with her beach body earnings, she bought that plane ticket. Okay. And then she went on that trip. So that's been Jennifer's Greenberg ever. Like her whole journey is setting small, tiny little goals of something that she wanted and, and just working towards that next thing. So it turns out that she's, she starts to believe in herself that she can hit goals because they're getting bigger. These little goals are getting bigger shoes, nails, a chair, a flight, they start getting bigger and bigger. Next is Summit, right? To go to Summit with us in Las Vegas. She starts hitting these little goals. About 18 months into her journey, like I show here, 14 months in, she became a diamond coach. She watched me, because I left my job at 14 months. I left my full-time job, not Gabby, not just Gabby. Gabby and I both left our full-time jobs in June of 2012. And that was about 14 months in for both Jennifer and I. And that's where she started to, to think, bigger picture, bigger goals. And I remember having a conversation with her. I was like, why don't you guys have any kids? Cause right. Gabby and I have like a, a herd of them. And we're like, why don't you and Mike have any kids? Cause we're the same age as, as this couple. And she started sharing that they really didn't have, they didn't even consider having kids because they both work so many hours and they're never home. So they wouldn't want to raise a kid if they're not around. So there came the bigger goal and a bigger reason, a bigger compelling reason. And at that point, she made a decision that she was going to build a business so she could have a child and come home from that job and, and, raise, her, and raise a baby from home with her new home business with Beachbody. Guys, what happened at that point when she made that decision is she began to hit Success Club every single When she made that decision, she made Success Club 5 every single month. About 18 months later, she became a Success Club all-star. So 12 months in a successful ball star, 18 months in, we ended the year and Jennifer went from, <coughs> went from that diamond coach to a five-star diamond and elite. And at the time, guys, I think there was only like 120 elite coaches in the entire company. So she became an elite coach that, that year. And, and that year, I remember we got, we went to leadership together to the leadership retreat. And we're, our favorite thing to do together, us four, sit in the hot tub and just talk about goals and dreams. And I remember her just asking me, you know, me as her coach and her mentor, Scotty, like, I want to do more. Um, like, that's the year I, our team was a top 10 team. We were top 10 in the company. She went elite. And she's like, I just want to do more. Like, I don't, but I don't know what to do more for my team. Like, we're Five Star Diamond. I hit Success Club. You know, I'm a Success Club All-Star. I don't know what else to do to hit, uh, to be a better leader. And so I gave her the most simple answer ever. Do more. I said, hit success club 10. And guys, this is what she said to me. She said, but I've never done that before. Like I can't, I've never done that before. And I said to her in that hot tub, it's because you've never decided to do it before. You've never made that decision 
to do that before. You tell me you want to be a better leader, this is what I'm telling you. You've got to do more than your people are doing. When you raise the bar for yourself, people around you will do more. So she said, okay, I'm going to do it. Guys, that was, she'd never hit Success Club 5 in her entire journey as a coach. When she made that decision in the hot tub, she hit, she hit Success Club 10 the next month. And it's been over two years now, two and a half years, and she's hit Success Club 10 every single month since we had that conversation in that hot tub. She grew our business to three-time elite coach, so three elite three times in a row, nine-star diamond. And you guys are going to see a lot of noise about this on, win on Thursday morning. But uh, calculations are, have all been done, and she'll be a million club member on Thursday morning, which means her Team Beachbody business has earned a million dollars in the five and a half years since she started as a coach. Like, how incredible is that, guys? But that came from, it wasn't like starting with this million dollar dream. It started with small goals and hitting those small goals. And that got her success club once in a while, right? It got her to Emerald slowly. It got her diamond slowly. But when she decided, like, I'm going to come home from work, like a bigger reason, right? And I'm going to have a child. That's when she hit, she hit success. That's when it became more serious. She hit success club every single month. Hit elite, hit five-star diamond. And that, that projection and that compound effect over the next three years brought her to the million club. And she got asked to, to travel. She got like her flight paid for to travel and speak at a super Saturday. And she's a self-proclaimed uh, super shy girl. So, um, as far as goals, that's why I, want, I wanted to share that story because when you hear stories, you're like, you see Jennifer from the outside um, as this million club member, three-time elite, and you're like, ah, oh, I can't do that or it's not me. But I wanted you guys to see that slow, that process. <coughs> Can you go get me water? That process and how it just, just like Ke we talked about with Kina and her Taekwondo, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. She took a single step every single day. Um, and I've never seen her not work her business in five and a half years. She's, she shows up all the time. And she's very strict on her balance between family and work. Like I've asked her to share on team calls on Thursday. She's like, nope, sorry. <coughs> my date night's on Thursday. That's my non-negotiable date night with Mike. We go on a date every, every Thursday night. So uh, she keeps that balance, but she's very strict with her business and her family life. So... I'm going to share a little bit, um, pretty cool story, right? Pretty incredible story to see. Um, I want to share that with you guys so you can get a little transfer of belief into yourself uh, and begin to see the importance of setting uh, bigger goals, but also the small goals. If you, if you take note, small goals were uh, the shoes and the nails, the chair, the flight, um, then it got bigger, um, having a kid, uh, leaving her job, and that's in, in Success Club 5. When, when she wanted to be a better leader, it was other small goals, Success Club 10 monthly. So there's all these little uh, monthly markers uh, on goals to hit. So uh, moving on, I'm going to show you guys. I think it's amazing that I still have this. That I still have this. I'm going to keep it forever. Guys, I wrote this out at my office in my job when I was miserable and wanting to make this a full-time job for myself. I want you guys to see how specific my goals were. Guys, the reason that I had so much fear and the reason I worked overtime, the reason my wife worked is because we could hardly pay our mortgage. So I set specific goals, but man, my beach body money, everything was going to that mortgage. I wanted to get rid of that, that, um, that thing that brought me so much fear and anxiety in my life. I wanted to, to get rid of it. So I set my goals like this. I want to show you how specific they are. Um, pay mortgage. <clears throat> Sorry, this is... Um, January of 2012, so I was nine months into the business. It said, earn $4,000 a month, this is month, earn 4,000, put 3,500 of that to my mortgage. Like write a check for 3,500. February, earn 4,500, pay 3,500 to my mortgage. March, 45, earn $4,500, um, pay 3,500 to the mortgage. So I have very specific goals on how much I wanna earn, but also how much I'm putting towards paying off my house, which was my big goal on top of bringing my wife home. I also put goals for my business in with those financial goals. One star diamond. Um, May, two star diamond. June, three star diamond. August, five star diamond. September, 100,000 a year income. So my big, my, my goal, like I told myself I would walk away from my job when I had 100,000 a year income. So I set very specific goals. 
And guys, it seemed impossible to hit this goal right here. Impossible. It, the numbers weren't matching up, but I kept working in faith, hitting Success Club 10, showing up to the team page, doing the vital behaviors. And I ended up hitting this goal in June. And we walked away from our job like three months early. So that's the cool thing about having goals is you have landmarks to work towards. Um, I also put specific, specific as this, pay off 56500 for mortgage in 2012. What did I do to get that number? I calculated these together. Make sense? So I calculated these monthly together to pay this amount off in 2012. Then when I pay that off, I'm going to owe 98500 as of January 2013. I put a goal, pay off home by Christmas 2013. I'm going to tell you guys the craziest thing that happened. And it's not crazy. It's called the universe and the help of God. I decided by writing this goal, I'm going to pay off my house Christmas 2013. Um, they announced that they were going to do this new recognition program at Summit in June. They said, this was in January. They said, anybody that they're, they're going to give a new award called the Financial Freedom Award. Can you, can you get that black one? They announced they're going to give this new award at Summit that if you have no debt, including no mortgage, you get to burn your mortgage on stage at Summit. And I saw it. I saw it. I was like, man, I already have a goal of, of paying off my house by, 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 by Christmas. That's going to be incredible enough. But then I started thinking, like, how cool would it be to take a team of coaches to Summit and they can see me up there being responsible with my beach body income, paying off debt. Like how empowering would that be to not just my coaches, but everybody. And I made that my compelling reason because I already was walking away from my job. I made that my compelling reason was to pay off my house and show people financial responsibility and pay off my mortgage. And I set that goal and I'm going to be uh, specific with you guys. We owed a hundred thousand, 98,000 that we had to pay off an entire year. I did the math on how much I would have to pay monthly. Right, and that's uh, like I can't remember what ten thousand, ten thousand. Uh, it's like eight thousand. So I, I I calculated it, and it was impossible. I didn't make that much. Well, I'm, okay, that's what it was. Ten. It was like eight thousand dollars. I had to pay a month, and I'm I'm at a six figure income, so I can do that, and I can live very minimally. Heck, I've done that for the past five years. So I put all my money towards the house. I can hit that goal, and I was excited about that. Then they announced this thing at Summit, and I envisioned paying my mortgage off before there, uh, before Summit. I did the math. That gives me six months to hit that goal instead of 12. That means I have to pay off $16,000 a month to hit that goal by June. I was making, and I remember the math now, I was making $11,000 a month as a Beachbody coach when I set the goal to pay $16,000 a month. The math doesn't work, right? It's impossible. But I set that goal. I sat out in my hot tub every morning and I visualized what it would feel like, like Kina's black belt on the wall, to burn my mortgage on stage in front of everybody and how that would inspire uh, thousands of people. Guys, in May, one month early, it was actually like three and a half weeks early, we paid off $100,000 in, in those five months because our team grew and our income grew massively at that time. And I have no idea how it happened. But I know that I set the goal, and I believed with everything that I had that it would be possible. So um, I want you guys to know that some of the goals that you guys set can you put that back, are going to feel impossible. But you have to see what others have done, know it's possible, and then, like Kena said, work hard. Like work super hard uh, and give everything you have to it. And that's what that happened. I put other little um, – guys, I put little other goals in there as well, like um, three – uh, one week vacations during the year because heck, I could I barely got one vacation in a year before, prior to um, becoming a coach. So I wanted three vacations a year to celebrate um, the hard work that we were putting in. So I'm gonna come off of this screen for a minute, and then I'll come right back. I gotta see your beautiful faces. I gotta make sure everybody's here. <laughs> there you guys are. So um, I want you guys to know that I've set other goals after that, and we've hit every single one of them. Eric and Dominique right there are sitting in in our cabin. That was a goal I set. That was a goal I set, and I want you guys to know, uh, I have a video, I want you guys to look it up because I go into detail, it's called The Power of Visualization. Search Scotty Hobbs, Power of Visual Visualization. What you put out into the universe, your goals, uh, your, your positive affirmations, visualizing, hitting them. Um, Eric and Dominique, you guys are going to have to go, I think I've showed Eric, but Eric, go show Dominique downstairs afterwards. Above the TV downstairs, above the Wii, there's a sign, 
I tried creating a sign business before becoming a beach body coach and I created my ideal dream view of a vacation home. This is before I was even a beach body coach. It's almost identical to the view out that cabin. It has a lake, it has a, like a, a pond, it has an elk, well we have moose there, it has a big mountain point which is right out there, it's, it's identical, it's crazy. You'll see it in the video, I show them, but I've set goals like that and visualize them and every single one has happened, but not without a ton of hard work. So I want you guys to start thinking about your big goals, your compelling reasons, why they're important. Guys, I, I didn't just get that cabin because I wanted a fancy cabin. I grew up fishing on that lake with my dad and my grandpa. My grandpa passed away without me getting to say goodbye when I was um, on my mission in Venezuela. And, and I, it's, my, it's my place to remember uh, my memories growing up with my dad and my grandpa who uh, helped create me and, and helped me develop into the person man, Helped me become the person that I am. So it was important to me that I created, our, I had a place up there that I could spend time with my children and my grandchildren and future generations. So it's not just like I want to have money or in this nice place. There's, there's meaning that I put behind every, every goal that I set. So we're going to jump back because we're like firing through this. Um, uh, let me go back to the share screen. So I want, I'm talking about these because I want you to start writing down your goals and your dreams, um, both the big and the small. But I'm going to give you guys some very specific um, small goals. I don't have a slide for this one. Um, if you're not to these yet, if you've already hit these, like jump to the next goal, right? But as this is the goal, the goals I set with my new coaches in my Coach Basics group. First week, make your first sell. Doesn't matter if it's a challenge pack. Make your first sell, learn how to send a link, learn how to check if it came through, and get a commission. I want you guys to do that. That's your first goal. Second goal is I want them to hit Success Club 5 in the second week. Um, and obviously set your own goal according to your own week schedule. Like remember goals with the deadlines like you see on this page right here. Uh, these are month goals, but set goals with a deadline. Third week, I want them to become an Emerald coach. Fourth week, I want them to help me um, run a new coach training group so they can practice their leadership and train their new, their two new coaches together with me. So those are the first goals I start with. I want you guys to write that down if you're wondering how to train your coaches and kind of some goals to help them, small goals, but also find on top of Success Club, right, um, find a goal for them uh, as far as like something they want to get or have or that would be important to them. Guys, I set a goal for myself every month still. If I hit Success Club 10 by the 10th, I go get an 80 minute massage, full body sports massage. And I do that as a reward for myself to force myself to hit that goal early on in the month so that I don't have to put my goal of Success Club on somebody else's agenda at the end of the month. Because I've made a commitment to myself that I'll never miss Success Club 10. I don't want to get to the 31st and have like six points and be like, oh, shoot. And like do every tricky thing I can think of to try to sell somebody a challenge back on the last day. Because that's putting, that's my agenda and not their agenda. So I always want a challenge pack or a coach sign up or a challenger sign up to be their decision on their time. That's why I set my goal and my deadline for early in the month and I, and I reward myself monthly for hitting that goal. So reward yourself for hitting your goals because it's going to be much more enjoyable because if your big goal is to leave your job and you never reward yourself for the two years it takes, you're going to be miserable. You got to like have those, those moments of joy and, cel and of, of celebrating. Just like the kids feel when they get their belt, you got to celebrate. You got to go out and do something that you enjoy, go on like a two night vacation with your wife or something. Uh, just celebrate your success and, and use your Beachbody income to realize what it's doing for you guys. So uh, we're going to move on. We're going to go through these really fast. I'm not going to go into detail, but you can take screenshots of these. I'll also upload these into the Team Dynasty page as well as into uh, my Scotty's personally sponsored coach page. Um, yes, Emerald's important. Ruby's important. Diamond's important. But what you guys need to be striving for are team, these, write these down, team builder first, team leader second, org organizational leader third, and then executive leader fourth. Those are the landmarks and the benchmarks that you want to be striving for. They're going to build you a solid foundation and a real legit business. So I'm going to show you the image. You can screenshot it or take a photo of it. Also, I told you guys I would upload them in there. I got these created for you so that you can track your goals, right? So this is called the Roadmap, Roadmap to Team Builder. And I won't go into complete detail. I'm going to breeze through them so you kind of have an understanding. <laughs> then what I want you guys to know is that if you go into your coach online office, the front page has um, 
like Success Club, Volume, and Leadership Ladder. Just click Leadership Ladder, and it'll show you the details and what you need to accomplish to move up the rung of the Leadership Ladder. We're also going to be, like we've done diamond retreats in the past, like we're doing this team retreat, but we took 52 of our, our coaches, our, it was more like 25 of our diamond coaches plus a spouse to the Dominican Republic to celebrate success. We're no longer going to be doing diamond trips like that, big ones like that. We're going to do it based on team builders and to, or on team leaders. That's where the, the, our, our type of stuff, our type of recognition or, or team retreat training type of things is going to start happening as team leader. Because I've seen when you get to team leader, there's no turning back. That's someone that is solid uh, in building a team and, and creating income. So team builder is the first step. I have it set here so you can break it down into weekly goals or so you can track it. So this is for month, not week, remember, so month. So to be a team builder, you need to have commissions of $250 in a month. You need to be, um, you need to have Success Club 5. You need to be an Emerald Coach, uh, which means you have one coach on your left, one on your right that are active, so two coaches. And your weak leg volume, if you don't understand volume yet, go to YouTube and search um, Beach Body Compensation Plan and you'll find it. I have like three great videos on it. But to build your weak leg volume uh, to $200 in a month, or 200 volume in a month on your weak leg, not your strong, weak leg. And that means you're a team builder. Okay, so that's the first one. And these are, there's detailed uh, trainings on these as well on YouTube. Melanie Mitchell has a great one. So you can search Melanie Mitchell Leadership Ladder, or you can go into the Coach Online office and watch it there. Uh, next rung of the leadership ladder is the team leader. This is where I said I'm, we're going to start celebrating um, our um, like if we do uh, retreats for leaders, it's not going to be diamond based anymore. It's going to be team leader based. So for a month, it's going to be commission. You need to have a thousand dollars of commission a month. You need to have Success Club five every month. You need to be a paid diamond coach, so a paid rank of diamond. You need to have one, or you need to have four of your personally sponsored coaches that have at least one Success Club point. They don't have to have Success Club five. Just four coaches of personally sponsored that have at least one point. And then you have to have a weak leg volume of 5,000. So weak leg volume of 5,000. Here's a little thing for you to track. You can write in the names of your coaches, four coaches on your left, four on your right, and two emeralds makes you a diamond coach. So you're a diamond. You have Success Club 5. You have $1,000 of commissions. You have four of these coaches. At least four of these coaches are producing at least one Success Club point and you have 5,000 volume points. So if you break it down, you would just track it here, like you could have 500 volume. Track week two, 300 volume. Next one, 300 volume. So now you're eight, 1,100, and then let's say you have 500 volume here. That's 1,600 volume. So you can see your 1,600 volume, then you can see how short you are, right, of the volume points that you need, the 3,400 that you need to get to the next rung of the leadership ladder at the team leader amount. So, so that's a, a good image for you guys to track um, where you're at, your totals, and what your goal is. Um, and also put a deadline for your goal, right? If you're, if you're working toward, let's say you're a diamond, you're hitting success club monthly, your commission's at like 500 a month, you got two of your coaches, person sponsor hit, hitting success club, and you're at like 3,000 volume, you know exactly what you need to do to get to team leader. So I want you guys to write these down and be very specific about writing these goals out. Next, uh, Roadmap to Organizational Leader. This is the next big one. Guys, pretty much when you're getting to Organizational Leader, you're going to be elite. <clears throat> Not a promise, but I can pretty much guarantee that if you get to Organizational Leader status, you're, you're hit, heading in the right direction of becoming elite, being an elite coach. So I got the same thing here, tracked. Um, what you need is $2,500 of commission. And that's in a month, right? You need a Success Club 5. You need to be a two-star diamond or above. You need to have six of your coaches. The other one was three. You got to have six coaches that have at least one Success Club point. You got to have a weak leg volume of 1,500. Guys, I'll tell you what that means. A weak leg volume of 1,500, that's 3,000. That's 6,000 total or that's, sorry, that's for a month. Sorry, I don't want to confuse it. This is month. I, I always think on the weekly term. <laughs> so that's month, 1,500 um, week leg volume per month. So, and you can track that right here as well. And then this last, this added one right here, 
you have to have to be an organizational leader. You have to have two of you personally sponsored that become team leaders. This one right here. So two of your coaches, two of those diamonds need to be team leaders. <clears throat> so I got a little thing for you here. You can write in the names of your, your 12 active coaches. Who's your diamond on the left? Who's your diamond on your right for your two star diamond? And you can begin to track uh, your roadmap to organizational leader. Next is executive leader. So we've been a, uh, an executive leader since uh, they came out with a leadership ladder a couple years ago. You got to have an $8,500 commission per month. Guys, that's a six figure income basically. You got to have a success club five every single month. You got to be a five star diamond or above. You have to have eight of your personally sponsored coaches with at least one success club point. And you have to have weak leg volume of 50,000 in a month. So 50,000 weak leg volume in a month. And then you have to have four team leaders. So remember, org organizational leader, you need two team leaders. Uh, executive leader, you need four team leaders. So four diamond coaches that uh, qualify for um, this team leader status. Guys, that building your business according to this and not just going for like a rank, like being a five-star diamond. Um, like it's great to be a five-star diamond or it's great to be a two-star diamond, but it's so important that you focus on these things, on creating other uh, team leaders, on making sure that your coaches are getting success club points or that they're in, in action, that are, they're helping people. And that's how you're going to be able to build a, a thriving business to where uh, you want to get to your end goal. So I wanted to give you guys these, uh, let me stop share here, and I'll, I'll upload these into the team page. But uh, give me a thumbs up if those kind of help you kind of know how to gauge or give you some more solid goals to work towards. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I track every single month in my business. I'm going to pull it out right here. <clears throat> one thing that I track every single month in my business is in this notebook right here. Sorry. Is, I'm gonna, you're not going to be able to really see it, but this side this specific page is all of my personally sponsored coaches um, that had a success club point. Just as, as soon as they, so I'm checking my office, right, consistently. And when they get one point, they come on this list. So I have, and I put a star next to them when they have success club five. So I know who hit success club five. You can see I put a number next to them, three, three, five, six, five, five, three. So I track what my coaches are doing. So it's important that you track what you're doing, but you also eventually get to the point where you're tracking and knowing what your coaches are doing as well. And guys, that's following that system of tracking what my coaches were doing. And it's amazing what can happen when you can just say, Hey, I'm looking at Tyler here, Tyler and Teresa. It's like, Hey Tyler, dude, it's the 20 of the month. You're at three success club three. Like that is freaking awesome, man. You're like, you, you've helped two people get started. You have what it takes, man. I want you to finish strong. You got 10 more days to find one more person. You think you can do that, right? And then you can challenge people to finish strong and lock in success club. So um, how many of you guys, that's basically what I want to teach you guys today. Give you an example of, of my journey of setting goals and achieving them or the importance of setting goals. Share an example of uh, Jennifer Greenberg setting goals and achieving them. Obviously also sometimes it's good to look outside Beachbody, right? On how to achieve things like Kina setting goals and achieving them. Uh, and, and that's what I want for you guys. You guys became team beach body coaches because you, you have big goals and dreams. You're on this call because you have some sort of goal you're working towards. So, uh, to recap back to the beginning, don't be overwhelmed with this new stuff that you learned, print it out, put it somewhere you can see it. You know, don't worry about executive leader right now. Work, work on the next rung, print out that one, put it in front of you. If you have your two coaches, write their names in there and then write down and look at how, how am I going to get to 200 volume? right on that weak leg so that I can move up and become that first uh, team builder uh, on the organization on the leadership ladder so just work one one step at a time remember the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step so start with the one that's right in front of you guys and what I can tell you if you have those goals written out it's gonna the path will eliminate as you go as you hit the next goal you know you, your belief grows you see what's what else is possible and it's gonna grow one step at a time but also, don't forget that it's, it's not bad to have the bigger goal. Like, have the bigger goal, the bigger dream. It's important that you have it out there so you know the end direction. It's like, if I didn't have the bigger goal of bringing my wife home and me working full-time as a Beachbody coach, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't have the clear direction on where I'm going. And, 
And so it's important that you have that bigger goal, but then break it down and be specific about your goals and set little deadlines for you. And then remember, if you miss it, it doesn't mean you're a failure. Like you guys got to let go of that, that part. It doesn't mean you failed. Or if you became an emerald and lost your emerald, doesn't mean you failed. Or you became a diamond and you dropped your diamond, doesn't mean you failed. That as long as you're taking one step in the right direction with the right mindset, doing the right action, you're going to get to the goal. And it doesn't matter. Like, I want you to think about this bigger picture right now. Let's say 10 years from now, Kina's going to be a coach. I already know that. We're going to expand to other countries. Eventually, I already know that. And we're just in the U.S. right now. So we have a lot of place to expand and grow this team. So 10 years, I think 10 years out. Like, let's say, let's just throw a number out. Let's say your big goal is making 50000 a year. 1000 a week, 50000 a year. Uh, bringing your wife home, or that replaces your income. Maybe that's your big goal. I want you to think about it. And let's just say you put three hours a day, two hours, let's say two hours a day for 10 years, and you don't complain about your journey. You just take one step forward, and you become healthier, and you add value to people's lives, and you grow your skills, and you grow your confidence, and you read 500 books in 10 years. And it takes you 10 years to get to that point, to 50,000 or 100,000 a year. And you don't have another job. This is your job. You stay at home. You paid off your house. You're working, doing something you absolutely love. Is that still worth it? How many of you would it be worth it? And maybe your goal is not 50,000. Maybe it's 80,000 to replace your job or whatever it is, if that's your big goal. Think big picture. But you'll never get there if you're complaining about why Eric and Dominique are there and you're not yet. You'll never get there if you're complaining about why Jennifer's there in five years and you're not there yet. The way you're going to get there is focusing on your journey. And to end out the call, I'm going to share with you guys um, a picture I put on Facebook. You might have seen it, but I think it's a good picture to end this call on because you guys are all going to set some goals. You're going to start running towards them with everything that you have. Uh, and you're going to be excited about it because the journey is a process. Uh, I'm going to go to Gabby's page. I can probably find it easier on Gabby's page. I think I tagged her. I'm going to, you guys get to watch me scroll Facebook. I don't scroll Facebook at home, but I'm scrolling it for you right now uh, because I know it's right over here. And watch, I probably didn't, I probably didn't tag her. Dang it, I didn't tag her. Okay, I'm going to go to my Facebook. You guys get to watch me scroll for a minute. Okay, because we're going to end on this powerful note in this image. But I'm going to tell you two stories, actually. Look at Jeff Vance doing some celebration. Give, when you see Jeff Vance on the team page, give him a shout-out because he's celebrating uh, his challenger's results right here. Dang, I love this. Isn't this company awesome? Like, we help people get in the healthiest that they've ever been before. It's absolutely awesome. Okay, this photo, sorry you guys got to watch me scroll, and I should have prepared it, but it just came to me about how important it would be to show this to you right now. Because <clears throat> I want you to see it. Okay. Hang with me, hang with me, hang with me. Oh, we got to go to this one. I did it from, oh, there it is right there. Okay. I want you to look at this. So you guys are going to set new goals. Remember, it might be five years out. Maybe your goal is to accomplish that big goal you're talking about, uh, let's say the 50,000. Maybe your goal is to do that in three years. Possible. I've seen people do it. A ton of people do that. Well, let's say it takes you 10 years and you get there. It's worth it because you're healthier. You've grown yourself. You've made a difference in your life. You've mattered to people. And you're there. Eventually, you're there. But here is this, um, this image that I wanted to give you guys today. Winners focus on winning, losers focus on winners, okay? And some people were upset on, on my Facebook post that you shouldn't call them a loser. Guys, it's not, that's not the point. The point is one person wins their race, one person lost the race, right, in this, in this, in this specific story. But if you want to win the race, and the race isn't, for example, I'm looking at Tony, the race isn't Tony against me. The race is Tony against Tony yesterday, right? Um, my race is me against me yesterday, me against me yes, last year. So focus on your race, focus on your, your journey. And then the story that I want to leave you guys with, and I'm going to pop out of here, is as you set your goal, focus on you. 
only look to the others to see how you can improve, to see uh, what's working for them, uh, and then try to apply in your life. And the last story I want to leave you guys with, um, because I know obstacles are going to come up, is the story of Jim Thorpe. Uh, I can't remember the exact date. It was like the 1912, 1918 Olympics, I think. He was a Native American who was uh, in track and field. And Jim Thorpe, guys, he had everything possible come against him on the day of his big race in the Olympics that year. He woke up and his running shoes were stolen. The day he was going to run the Olympics, right, his running shoes were stolen. So what seemed like all odds were against him that morning, he woke up knowing that he, his purpose was to, win the, to, to run that race for America. That was his purpose. By some, some chance, by luck, whatever you want to call it, he found some shoes in the dumpster outside of his home. They were not a matching pair. One was bigger than the other. You can see him that day in a black and white photo with mismatched shoes. And one, one leg has like thick socks on and one of them's really long. So mis and he had lots of socks on to make the other shoe fit. He went on that day when, when all was against him. And he won two gold medals with mismatched shoes and socks. So it makes me think about that, you know, no enemy or no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So you guys are going to leave this call. You're going to leave Summit. You're going to leave Super Saturday, the Dynasty Surge with big goals and some, some action plans and some, and some actual deadlines and goals, specific goals you can set, you're going to have obstacles come against you just like Jim Thorpe did. Someone's going to get sick. You're going to lose a family member. Somebody might get cancer. You might break your collarbone. You might have something happen to one of your kids. Something is going to come up, but it's important that no matter what comes against you, that you just run your race every single day. So that's what I'm going to leave you guys with today. Um, I'm going to, this call is recorded. I'm going to upload it into, uh, on the YouTube. I'll put it in the team page, but I'll also upload those four, um, those four slides so you guys can print them out uh, all pretty like and uh, be able to start tracking your goals. And uh, what I challenge you to do is whatever one you're working towards, fill it out on where you're at and share it with your coach. Take a picture of it. Text it to your coach and say, here's where I'm at. This is where I, this is, I want to be at this point by um, October or whatever it is your goal and uh, use that to hold yourself accountable with your accountability partner or with your coach or heck put it in your team page and ask for somebody else that's in there that has similar goals as you and work together with them okay I love you guys uh, thanks for being on this call next week we have I want you guys to tell your teams we have Michelle Harris on she's a three-star diamond success club 10 all-star legend she's a school teacher by trade so she's gonna be very good at teaching you guys some amazing things. She's actually in Jennifer Greenberg's downline. She's a couple levels deep of Jennifer Greenberg as a star diamond. So I want you guys to uh, be ready for that call next week. But guys, let's take action today. I expect that we work harder than anybody else in this company, that we have bigger goals, bigger dreams, and that we create more transformation stories than anybody else. That's got to be the message that we make loud and clear. So first and foremost, it's got to be us transforming ourselves and helping others. That's how we're going to build a solid business that's going to last 10 years. Okay. Love you guys. See you guys later.